So I mentioned David Davis, Conservative MP for Halton and Price and Howden, former Shadow Home Secretary. Let me put the opposite question to you, David, which is actually whether this tape particularly shows MI5 were doing a fantastic job. No, they were doing a fantastic job. They were doing their job. I mean, they, they were all over him. But what? Well, they weren't. Unfortunately, that's part of the problem. I mean, let, let me just put some context on this. 9-11, 7-7, Mumbai, Charlie Hebdo, Lee Rigby and this. In every single case, the relevant security agencies knew something about what was going on. Knew something. They knew the people, they knew part of the plot and so on. And they didn't focus in tightly enough. And that's really the problem here. Now, you're right. Cage is talking nonsense about the idea that MI5 radicalised this boy. I mean, that's just, just, just off the wall. Or he was on a safari. And that's daft too. Um, and they were right to stop him. Um, the problem was they didn't stop him in the last round. I also think your last speaker, Mr Harrington, is also talking nonsense that they're somehow safe out in Syria. Tell that to the hostages, I'm afraid. That's mm. simply rubbish. The, what the problem is here is, is uh, it's not even control orders because under the Labour regime of control orders, which this government changed, uh, seven, the seven most dangerous, absconded. One of them ended up being killed by a drone in Pakistan, others went elsewhere in the world. The dangerous ones get away under control orders. What you've got to do is catch these people, convict them and lock them up. That's the, that's the simple truth of it. Now, we, we only know what's in the public domain. We don't know what's in the MI5, file, MI5 files. But, for example, um, he was a part, Emwazi was a part of a thing called the London Boys Cell, uh, which spent its time raising money for al-Shabaab. That's an illegal activity. That's right. an act preparatory to a serious illegal activity. Could get him prison sentence of some, of some uh, length. It didn't happen. And my complaint about this is that they should be focusing far more tightly, not on 3,000 odd, which is what they have, but a, a, the few hundred who are the real threats. This, this man was in contact with uh, uh, Adam Balaja as well, the, the killer of Lee Rigby, uh, and focus on them much more tightly and put as many of them away as possible so you don't have them in the public, in the public domain. But Mr Harrington calls that internment because he thinks that in the end you are punishing people for things that you think they may do in the future. No, no, I'm not. I'm, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, in this case, I mean, he was he was also arrested twice for stealing bicycles. Well, you could, you could do him for stealing a bike. You but, could do but, him for but, tax affairs. You yeah. could do him for anything. Well, you I could suppose. do the Al Capone approach. Yeah, of course exactly. you could. But but what this? He, he was actually uh, the, the agency's the Home Office actually wrote the report. Document details the London boys and was he's part of described him as extremists involved in sending money to Somalia for terrorist activities. That's a criminal offence. Mm. It's not internment to send someone down for a criminal offence. I don't believe in internment. Internment failed in Northern Ireland. You know, uh, It's a disastrous side. And what we haven't done is equipped our agencies with some of the tools necessary. I mean, we are the only country in the world, for example, that doesn't, well, other than Southern Ireland, that doesn't allow intercept evidence to be used in court. Most of the data on these people is emails, texts, phone calls between them. If we could use that data, we could put far more of them in prison. You wouldn't have three 3,000 people to follow, you'd have a few hundred. What do they do in the USA if they think someone is, is going to do something big in the future? Oh, uh, if, they, if, they get the, if they get them on, on air, as it were, then they put them away. Uh, and indeed, I went to see the Department of Justice. When I was Shadow Home Secretary, I went to see the Department of Justice because I was concerned about this, this strategy. Uh, and they said they didn't understand the British approach. We, we claim that if we use intercept evidence, it'll tell people you know, that we're spying on them and so on. Well, they only, they only have to look around the rest of the world. They only have to watch a Hollywood film, frankly, to see what goes on. And so it's ridiculous to say we're giving away our techniques. The Americans think, I don't understand what we're doing. They say to me, oh, well, you know, if we don't have a tape uh, in front of the jury, the jury wonders what's going on. They rolled up the in uh, uh, serious terrorist networks. They actually rolled up the mafia, far smarter than these cookies. Uh, that They rolled up the entire organised crime networks in, Nor in North America, basically using intercept. Mm -hmm. The Australian um, Director of Public Prosecution says if you don't use intercept, you're not being serious. So to come back to the point about MI5... You know, they should have that power. You know, I don't want to give them loads of surveillance powers, but they should have that power to use that in court and put more of them away. In America, they are required by law to try to get convictions. Just for people listening at home who, who are... They've, this narrative is now establishing itself that every time something happens, MI5 have, have dropped the ball, OK? Yeah. And, and just on the other hand, now this tape emerges... We do, we do think, my goodness, they're doing, they're doing a lot of work on these people, aren't they? No question. There was a story yesterday that uh, Mohammed Emwazi decided to sell his laptop. 
He advertises it in the evening standard or whatever. The, the person who buys it basically says, I'm an MI5 agent, thanks very much. So they're doing some work on these people. Of course. We spend £2 billion a year on our intelligence agencies one way and another. Of course they're doing a lot on it. Uh, but, you know, the simple truth is, that how effective is it? And you're wrong, actually. There hasn't been a narrative over the years of, of blaming MI5. We've avoided that. I mean, in, back in, in the 7-7 bombing, I wrote the Tory party policy on it, and an explicit part of it was not to blame the agencies, not to give the other side a propaganda coup, because if you remember the year before in Madrid, it had brought government down. Mm. So we very, very explicitly haven't done that. Um, but the trouble is that comes a time when you have to say, look, this has happened too many times, not just in Britain, in France, in America, that these people have got away because we haven't focused tightly enough, we haven't put enough of them away. Thank you very much, David Davis, former Shadow Home Secretary.